Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, likes, comments, and subscribes are appreciated as they do help with the YouTube algorithm. Very big thank you to all the Patreon members and to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Welcome back for another News I Missed where I go over News I Missed. While pushing for the SEC to approve its Bitcoin ETF application, good luck, Grayscale has launched a new crypto-related index to track digital asset companies. Digital currency investment and cryptocurrency asset management firm Grayscale continues to chase its expanded ETF plans with the launch of a new crypto-related index offered in collaboration with Bloomberg. According to a press release issued on Wednesday, the 19th of January, Bloomberg and Grayscale have announced the launch of an index called the Bloomberg Grayscale Future of Finance. Wow, pretentious. The index is built to provide investors with an analytical tool to follow the convergence of finance, technology, and digital assets in the growing digital economy. Bugifuga, as it's called, it's BGFOF, will track the U.S. and non-U.S. crypto-linked equities across 22 companies selected by Bloomberg's intelligence analytics based on its proprietary theme basket methodology. <laughs> Terrible. The filing document, however, doesn't list the 22 companies, but they said to be firms. They are said to be firms that will play a pivotal role in the growth of the emerging digital e Economy. The index will not offer direct exposure to digital assets what? or their derivatives, but will instead offer investors indirect exposure to the crypto-linked equities tracked by the BGFOF across markets like crypto trading, blockchain innovation, cryptocurrency mining, and virtual asset management. This sounds terrible and was actually quite popular news when this news was initially released and i mean listen now now what's happening is is that because the us sec has yet to and not will not any time in the near future be giving any type of regulatory clarity uh, for people within the united states and or uh allow the issuance of a bitcoin etf anytime soon a lot of other companies are looking for other ways to make ETFs that are linked in some sort of way to the cryptocurrency space. Uh, this is not the first and will not be the last of something like this that is getting launched. Uh, and no one's going to use it. For those of you who missed a couple of months ago, when we had a slight uptick in the cryptocurrency market, it was because a number of companies, uh, or I think one or two and then three came out, were able to finally get a a Bitcoin ETF through the SEC. However, it was a Bitcoin futures ETF, which was also complete nonsense because it's still indirect, indirect exposure to the actual asset class. So what a lot of companies are trying to do now and what one I think also applied for a couple of weeks ago was a uh, cryptocurrency metaverse company ETF, futures ETF as well, which is absolutely ridiculous. Basically trying to the to try to track wow try to track there we go the performance of companies who are dealing with metaverses, which is like what why not actually you know actually have direct exposure to the actual companies in a basket, but it's always a future so it's indirect exposure to the actual company, uh, and then the craziest part was we got news a month ago maybe less than a month ago at this point, uh, that nearly all the Bitcoin futures ETFs that have launched in the United States, uh, the amount of money and funding in those uh, ETFs have all but dissipated, falling apart, uh, quickly actually moving away from them and probably moving into the actual cryptocurrencies that they're trying to track. So I mean, it's basically these companies trying to be the first to say that they've done something or other and they did the first one to do this because they couldn't have the other thing. But uh, I would simply do as Fidelity did and, and, and just move or do business in Canada because, you know, here we have a lot of other stuff going on for us. I, I, I still do not understand why the US SEC is so adamant that they will not launch these things or even more so. Uh, why people within the United States still care. 
I, I really wish I could get it because there's, I think, about 11 Bitcoin ETFs actually going on around the world right now. And we see the amount of money put into those ETFs increasing more and more every week because they're the actual ETFs that the U.S. has been looking for. And these are all physical, so they hold the actual Bitcoin and Ethereum. Anyway, that's the Bloomberg and Grayscale launch a future of finance index. Terrible. And without further ado, let's move on. Next up, the creators of the Flow Blockchain Network and NBA Top Shot, Dapper Labs, announced the launch of a new NFT compilation called UFC Strike. According to Dapper Labs, the new NFTs will launch a couple of days ago and feature amazing displays of striking and grappling. Wow. From UFC fighters. <laughs> Terrible. Since 1993, the American mixed martial arts promotion company Ultimate Fighting Championship has grown to be one of the world's most popular sports. According to the UFC, it has more than 625 million fans worldwide. And there's a photo of someone who I assume has punched many a person. Following the partnership announcement, UFC revealed the MMA company's first NFT collection that showcased the UFC 268 Usman versus Covington 2 event. Two days ago, the UFC heavyweight champion... I'm not reading all of that. The point is, um, what are they called? What are they called? Dapper Labs and NBA Top Shot are incredibly popular in the NFT space. I'm pretty sure Top Shot is the one who has the like NFTs of the popular sports moments. And this is how they kind of carved a niche for themselves. You can actually own the moments of these people throwing basketballs at each other in the in the hoop thingy. Because, you know, that's how sports work. So now they've moved on to the UFC. I think there was also uh, speculation before that there would be some type of a, a foray into the NFL MLB uh, kind of space as well, but I guess they're doing the UFC first. Maybe it was easier to get a lot of the uh, uh, the rights and copyrights to be able to have this footage. So cool. Can't wait for it. Um, I myself have not acquired any sports-related NFTs, but, you know, apparently a lot of these did pretty well. Like, if you look at the actual pricing for the the NBA stuff, some of that stuff was selling for six figures uh, for these precious, crazy moments of people making these like nine point shots. I know there are nine point shots, but they, you know, it was like literally the other end of the of the uh, of the court. So, anyway, that's the NBA Top Shot Dapper Labs is making UFC strike NFT news. And yeah, let's move on. Next up. Uniswap Labs, the primary developer of the decentralized finance protocol Uniswap, has hired former Federal Reserve economist Gordon Liao to lead its research branch. Liao highlighted various reasons for his move from the Fed money, uh, such as his excitement surrounding the many innovations in the crypto space. Money, a primary contributor to cryptocurrency's largest decentralized exchange, has revealed an important new hire. Uh, former Federal Reserve economist, Harvard PhD, economics, announced that he was moving to Uniswap Labs and uh, expressed his high hopes for the promises that Web3 would create a better, safer, and more accessible financial system. So cool. Uh, this happens all the time. A lot of times we end up getting the news that uh, said company has hired someone from Google or from Amazon, or from the Federal Reserve, or from the International Monetary Fund. It happens is always this exact same way. They're usually put on council as like a, hey, you know the rules, so you come over here to tell us exactly what the rules are so we don't get in trouble. It's usually what it comes down to. It's usually that, when these acquisitions take place, uh, no one ever really openly discusses the money. Think of what it would take for you to leave the people who are printing the US dollar. It would take a pretty penny. Imagine you working for Google or Amazon or the International Monetary Fund or the World Bank, how much money a company would have to offer you to go work for a cryptocurrency 
company. So it's not to be taken lightly by any means. These acquisitions happen all the time. If you, this was one of the main talking points in 2017 and 2018, uh, as far as uh, Ripple's uh, board of members. If you look at their board of members, uh, they probably did not come cheap. Anyway, that's the Uniswap is hiring former Fed people. Uh, I myself don't use Uniswap. I heard it's quite popular. And I assume this acquisition will, you know, make them more richer. That's the Uniswap news. Uh, getting new people on board. And yeah, let's move on. Next up in... Okay, the first physical store for buying and selling cryptocurrencies in Portugal is set to open. Bitbase, a Spanish startup that operates a chain of walk-in cryptocurrency exchanges and atoms, has announced plans to open there. Okay, they opened their first place in Portugal on the 24th of January in Lisbon. According to Portuguese news outlet Eco News, Bitbase... A Spanish-based startup is set to open its physical store for buying and selling cryptocurrencies. The store will open operations in Lisbon, offering exchange services for seven cryptos, including Bitcoin, Bcash, Ethereum, XRP, Dazaga. I have, I've never heard of Dazaga. What is D-A-S-G? Litecoin, Dogecoin, USDT, and BitBase tokens, because they, of course, they have their own token. It's native token based on the BEP standard of Binance, of course, why not? In cash or via bank card in just a few steps. The store will have several ATM-like machines, equivalent to ATMs. That's why they're called ATM-like machines for customers to perform their transactions with. They will also be regular crypto ATMs initially, uh, strategically, and customer support available. So... Cool. Apparently, uh, Bitbase has, I think, over a hundred of these already in Spain. Um, why someone would need to go to buy Bitcoin physically? I'm still not really sure. Um, if it's done in a way that you do not have to present identification, I think it would make a bit more sense in kind of that way, but I am going to assumption that if they set up a physical store, there's some type of regulation that went down as well, and therefore you going here is the same exact way as you signing up for Coinbase or some other place, so I'm not really getting it, especially every time if you have to walk in. Once again, I have no idea how this works, but I'm going to assume as countries uh, have you not taken an exact liking to Bitcoin, that an actual store that you'd be able to go into and buy and or sell this cryptocurrency, like, you're probably going to have to show some form of ID. Like, I don't anybody is going, I doubt that anybody's going inside there being like, hey, I have 1.5 million uh, euros worth of Bitcoin I'd like to sell. Yeah, no problem. Go to that machine right there. Is all the cash coming out? Okay, cool. Have a nice day, sir. You understand? So it's probably, you know, something along the, 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 um, that line. So cool. Physical shop in Portugal. Uh, if you live in Portugal or in Spain and have seen one of these uh, physical Bitcoin stores, please tell me about it because I would love to know how that works out. I've seen like physical Bitcoin ATMs before, like randomly sitting in the corner of like a store, but not at a physical store that's just for, I mean, listen. If it, if, if it allows more people to be able to get into the cryptocurrency market at their own leisure, all for it. Same exact way years ago, which we never really hear about anymore, when you were able to kind of buy like gift cards, uh, you know, here's $50 worth of Bitcoin and kind of things like that. That's kind of cool, but I guess this is the next level of that. Anyway, that's the physical Bitcoin store is opening up in Lisbon news. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, Shiba Inu has been listed on the trading platform called Uphold. The exchange announced that SHIB is now available in some regions. Shiba has been gaining significant adoption, but the Shiba Inu community is still anticipating a listing from Robinhood for some odd reason I will not understand. And I would dare even say... There's been so much hype around the Robinhood listing. If they announced the listing of Robinhood, 
and the price crashes? Uphold, a regulated multi-asset exchange, has added Shiba Inu to its platform. The exchange announced the listing via a tweet. However, trading SHIB is not yet available in all regions that Uphold currently operates in. Uh, and I imagine if it's everywhere else in the world except for New York. That would suck. The SHIB listing will bring the meme coin closer to over 1.7 million global Uphold users. So... It keeps happening more and more. Not only is Shiba Inu already in the news every single day, but Shiba Inu continues to be listed on other platforms that aren't even as big as as Binance and Coinbase and Kraken and Gemini, which I assumed was kind of the end all. You know, it's kind of like walking into a, a, a castle and being like, hey, can I sit down? And there's like four seats. It's for the king, for the queen, and for the other people sitting next to them. And you can sit in any of those four seats that you want, but there's one seat all the way in the back. It's a little rusty. Not many people are using it anymore since 2020. And you really want to sit in that chair. And for some reason, you just won't be happy inside the kingdom until you sit on that wobbly chair. I don't get And I've seen it. I've seen it. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Stop. Stop. I get it. I get it. The amount of people writing in the comment section telling me why Robin Hood is significant. No, it's not. Because... You can already do what you want to do on Robinhood in multiple other places. Robinhood is not the only place that has an app. Even furthermore, uh, remember we were just talking about Robinhood a couple of days ago? Maybe a week and a half ago. Uh, They just are now starting their actual withdrawal process on the actual app. And it's for 1,000 people. The waiting list is over 2 million people. They said by March, I'm, I'm going by what they said on the internet from the articles, it'll be 10,000 people will have access to this. Why are you waiting for that when you can do this anywhere in any other platform? You can buy Shiba Inu at any other time. But for some reason, Robin, I'm telling you, when the Robin Hood things, ha- I, 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 I can feel it. Shiba Inu is going to go by like 13%. By the end of the day, it's going to be negative. I can feel it. So much hype around a platform that no one really even uses anymore. Anyway, that's the Shiba Inu is now on Uphold. This is now the 18th platform that this coin is now on. And everybody's still waiting for Robinhood. And without further ado, let's move on. (laughs) And to finish things off, Global investment bank Goldman Sachs has predicted that the metaverse could be an $8 trillion opportunity. Several others have similarly predicted that the metaverse is a multi-trillion dollar market. Global investment bank Goldman Sachs has predicted that the metaverse could be an $8 trillion market opportunity. Goldman Sachs analyst Eric Sheridan explained the bank's metaverse prediction in a recent Exchanges at Goldman Sachs episode titled Understanding the Metaverse in Web3, but that's very to the point. He was asked about the evolution of the marketplace ahead and how big the potential opportunity could be. He said, we think once again, it should be $8 trillion, like the ninth time in this article. He said, if we look at the digital economy today, which is roughly about 20%, 25% of the global economy, we see the digital economy contributing to grow, continuing to grow, and on top of that, we see a virtual economy that will grow within and alongside that digital economy. So he's seeing growth in a sector that is going to grow. Woo! That's how we came up with the number for various outcomes of anywhere from two trillion to twelve trillion, with eight trillion at the midpoint of all potential outcomes. Several people have estimated the potential size of the metaverse. Rival investment bank Morgan Stanley similarly predicted in November of last year that the metaverse is an $8 trillion market opportunity. So, as always, banks are, even though they may not openly admit it to everyone else, at the forefront, heavy air quotes of everything that's actually going on in the cryptocurrency space. This may be why you may be wondering, there are so many companies talking about launching their own metaverse or integrating or getting into NFTs. Didn't it seem a little weird that like 45 companies got into NFTs and to the metaverse size over the same uh, two-month period? This also means that not only are banks paying attention, they're probably buying up huge amounts of assets behind the scenes while everyone else seemingly is not 
paying attention. The same exact thing with digital land. We went over that before. It seems completely insane. And then we had uh, Adidas, Nike, five other companies also buying up tons of digital land. The price is skyrocketed, still probably going up. And now it seems like a very good buy to other people because the richest people on the planet have bought into it. So yeah, I think it's going to be quite fascinating to see exactly uh, what this what 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 these metaverse size end up looking like because they're not going to look nice from the get go. I don't know if you know that, but I'm telling you that right now. But like 10, 15 years down the line, like do you remember like the graphics on like N64 and being like, whoa, these are graphics, and then like seeing it on like PS2 and then PS4 and the graphics basically like look completely real. At this point, so I assume the metaverse will eventually become like indistinguishable in a sort of way uh, from the real world. Anyway, that's the Goldman Sachs is shockingly looking at the metaverse. It's almost like there's a money making opportunity in metaverse and NFTs. Nah, never mind. That's 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 completely weird. They would never want to make money as a bank. Let's move on. Oh, forgot to launch it. Forgot to launch it. It's launching. It's launching. Kablam. There we go. I do hope that you've all in those a lot of transactions backed up. Holy guacamole. Whoa. Okay. Are the buses full? Bus is, this, this bus is not full. This bus is full. What's happening? Bus is also, wow, very, very full. Oh, my foot. Ow, 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 ow. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I had like a, had a Charlie horse, like out of nowhere. That's really weird. I do hope that you all enjoy. <laughs> I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.